multiple topics discussed at federal all-candidates meeting. Dan Kearns, local journalism initiative reporter for The Standard. Kawartha Lakes Residents of Kawartha Lakes were able to hear their 2021 federal election candidates' thoughts on a variety of topics during an all-candidates meeting held in Lindsay on Thursday, September 9th. The meeting was put on by the Lindsay and District Chamber of Commerce and the Frost Student Association. One of the issues discussed was housing affordability. Conservative candidate Jamie Schmale had a couple of actions in mind. The issue here is on the supply side in a lot of cases. What we are going to do is free up some spaces, starting with about 37,000 buildings the federal government has in its portfolio. We are going to look at the portfolio and then release a minimum of 15% of that supply to start creating houses, he said. We are also going to ban foreign home ownership, those who are trying to use Canada as a place to hide their money from other governments or other actors. We are going to stop that and start to relieve some of the pressure on the demand side. Young Canadians aren't asking for a free house. They're not asking for a handout. They're just asking for a little bit of help. And that's what we want to give them. We have a plan called a home for everyone. We want to unlock home ownership. We want to build more homes. And we want to protect the right of those buying homes, Liberal candidate Judy Forbes said. NDP candidate Jack Miller said the NDP plans to have 1.7 million homes created, with 500,000 of them listed as affordable housing. Green Party candidate Angel Godso stressed the importance of all Canadians having access to housing. Of course, the Green Party of Canada will work with all levels of government to promote and support local housing initiatives. We have a housing-first policy and believe safe and affordable housing is a human right. It will be protected by building more affordable housing, increasing funding for more cooperative and supportive housing to be built, and ensuring all housing in Indigenous communities is built following principles in the UN Declaration of Rights for Indigenous Peoples. The Green Party of Canada is also planning on launching a program on building retrofits. Libertarian candidate Jean Balfour explained the reason for the housing crisis could be Canadians not having as much disposable income after taxes, as well as excessive regulations. People's Party of Canada, PPC candidate Alison Davidson, cited lowering federal spending, balancing the budget, and reducing taxes as ways to help with this issue. The candidates were also asked if they would amend the Canada Health Act to include long-term care to ensure the sector receives public funding and there are national standards in place. Mr. Balfour opined, the health care system is already failing, so it wouldn't make sense to add more responsibility to the government. Ms. Davidson said the provinces need the autonomy to innovate and make things work better in their own province. She added long-term care homes need to follow regulations which are already in place. Ms. Forbes pointed the finger at the Ontario Provincial Conservative Government for the current state of the long-term care sector. It is important to note the Conservative government's willingness to stop random reviews of these homes, their reliance on privately owned homes, and the total failure of the Ministry of Health to support long-term care homes in this crisis, even with the help offered by the federal government, she said. Of course, Mr. Schmale took exception with that comment. I do find it interesting that she quickly posted blame at the current provincial government, given the fact, under 15 years of liberal rule in Ontario, Less than 2,500 old-age, long-term care facility beds were built, and privatization was expanded, he said. Mr. Schmail added, The Conservative Party plans to double health care transfer funding to the provinces. Mr. Miller said, The NDP has a plan to make all long-term care homes publicly owned. The first thing we must do is remove for-profit from long-term care. The federal government can do this, first by starting with Rivera, which is federally owned. Second, in order to best achieve the removal of profit from long-term care, the federal government must legislate an independent act of parliament which brings long-term care under the public umbrella. Within this act, national standards can be defined, he said. Ms. Godzo said, The Green Party is committed to holding a national inquiry into the long-term care crisis, and agreed the federal government must stop for-profit long-term care homes. 
2022 Brock budget process outlined to Council. Dan Kearns, local journalism initiative reporter for The Standard. Brock. Information on the Township of Brock's preliminary 2022 budget process schedule was announced at a meeting on Monday, September 13th. At the Committee of the Whole meeting, Ward 3 Councillor Walter Schumer provided councillors with an update on what the municipal budget process could look like in the next few months. Staff is putting together the roadmap for the 2022 budget, Councillor Schumer said. Timing can change. But beginning in October, I believe we are going to be getting a report from our treasurer recording capital projects and capital reserves. Just kind of a summary of what's in there, what it's allocated for, and what we can do. The Ward 3 councillor added, the township will be starting their public budget survey in mid-October. It will largely be a series of questions for people to rank, and obviously that will come to members of council first for some input, Councillor Schumer said. There may be a closed session for members of committee or council to see the details on what may be rolling out next year in respect to staffing costs. The month of November will be dedicated to meetings between the mayor, Councillor Schumer as the Finance Committee Chair, the Treasurer, the CAO, and department heads. It's similar to what we did last year. I think it was generally recognized as a very useful process, Councillor Schumer stated. The first draft budget will then be seen by councillors in January, with budget approval expected in February. Kawartha Lakes Council hears exciting and ambitious development plans for East Lindsay lands. Dan Kearns, local journalism initiative reporter for The Standard. Kawartha Lakes. Plans for a large development near I.E. Weldon Secondary School in Lindsay appears to have excited some members of Kawartha Lakes Council. At a Kawartha Lakes Committee of the Whole meeting, On Tuesday, September 7th, members of Flateau Developments presented their proposed plans for an area in East Lindsay. The proposed development would provide the addition of approximately 150 seniors-oriented residential units and 100 rental apartment units. The development will also include approximately 1,200 new homes and a mix of housing types, such as single and semi-detached housing and various forms of townhouses. The proposed development will provide an appropriate range and mix of uses, which will result in the creation of a complete neighborhood, Katarznia Sliwa told councillors. Ms. Sliwa added, there will also be two new parks to accommodate the recreational needs of the residents. The Flato website adds other amenities the company plans to include in this development. We are planning a community hub which will offer increased access to services the area needs, like grocery and live-work spaces. We would like to build new parks and are proposing a new community center with input from the community. Matthew Corey stated, Flateau is committed to making this development a walkable community and a complete neighborhood, while focusing on low-impact developments. The company wants to protect and integrate the natural environmental features of the area into the development. Flateau President Shakir Ramatula said the company is committed to working with the community and the municipality on this development. Building communities, to us, is not just buying a piece of land and putting in a lot of homes. For us, community building is way more than building homes. Community building is working with the community, with the municipality, working with all the stakeholders, such as the Conservation Authority and other agencies, to make sure we respond to the needs of the community he explained. Flateau has so far held two public information sessions on their vision and plans. The company is seeking a minister's zoning order, MZO, to proceed with development on a portion of the lands. An MZO is a tool developers can apply for, from the Ministry of Municipal Affairs and Housing, to fast-track development approvals. Having the MZO will help us to move faster and in parallel with the other requirements and studies the city will be doing, Mr. Ramatula explained. Ward 7 Councillor Pat O'Reilly called the development plans exciting and ambitious. Ward 6 Councillor Ron Ashmore questioned if the development will include commercial uses like malls or restaurants. The east side of Lindsay has always really lacked that type of commercial development, Councillor Ashmore said. Mr. Ramatula said the company has heard loud and clear from residents the needs for different types of restaurants, a coffee shop, and a grocery store in the area. 
Ward 5 Councillor Pat Dunn stated, this development should help with the housing crisis in Lindsay. Councillors later approved a motion to request city staff to bring back a report to the October Committee of the Whole meeting, with recommendations, options, and conditions for Council to consider, should they wish to support the request for an MZO. Kawartha Lakes changes course on local ATV route decision. Dan Kearns, local journalism initiative reporter for The Standard. Kawartha Lakes The city of Kawartha Lakes is changing course regarding ATVs in Lindsay. At a committee of the whole meeting on Tuesday, September 7th, councillors voted not to approve the Lindsay ATV route. Instead, the off-road vehicle use of City Roads Task Force will look at bypass options for an ATV route going around Lindsay. The original recommended route through Lindsay went from the Victoria Rail Trail, VRT, trailhead at Lodgy Street to King Street, then King Street to Lindsay Street, Lindsay Street to Wellington Street, Wellington Street to Victoria Avenue, Victoria Avenue to Elgin Street, Elgin Street to Angeline Street, Angeline Street to Thunderbridge Road, and Thunderbridge Road to the other rail trail trailhead. However, in mid-June, councillors voted to get more community input on this route. According to Public Works Director Brian Robinson's report, the city's communications department held a survey on this issue, which received 1,632 responses. Out of all 1,632 responses, 49.3% are in favor of an ATV connection route, and 50.7% are not, the report read. Out of all 1,080 Lindsay responses, 33.6% are in favor of an ATV connection route, and 66.4% are not. Councillors were split on the issue. The residents in my mind have spoken in the survey. 66.4% is a big number, so I agree with the motion not to go forward with the route in Lindsay. I do like the bypass option, Ward 1 Councillor Emmett Yeo said. However, Ward 5 Councillor Pat Dunn argued the council did not have enough representation in the survey to show Lindsay residents oppose this route. The population of Lindsay is 20,000 we have a 5% turnout. So you had 3.3% of the people in Lindsay who don't want it, he said. Councillor Dunn also stated he feels this sets a dangerous precedent. If we go down this road, every time we have to make a decision, we say, well, let's have a poll. We won't make any decisions at this council whatsoever. Ward 3 Councillor Doug Elmsley said over time, he's become less and less comfortable with the chosen road route through Lindsay. He also responded to Councillor Dunn's concern on the number of people who responded to the poll. If you wait to get more than 50% of people to weigh in on a poll, it's going to take a long, long time. But I think what you have is a representative sample. Mayor Andy Letham felt it would be best for Council to listen to the Lindsay residents on this issue. The route through Lindsay would be a disaster. It's not what the majority of the people want, he stated. Ward 6 Councillor Ron Ashmore said he feels this conversation and process has made a total mockery of the off-road vehicle task force. Mayor Letham responded, saying Councillor Ashmore's comments were completely out of line. Councillors later voted, with the bypass motion passing by the narrow margin of 5 to 4. However, as it was a committee of the whole meeting, the decision still has to be ratified at a council meeting later this month. The Standard Podcast was produced by Greenstream Studio for The Standard Newspaper. Thank you.